Thanks a lot. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to present here at OIS. I actually had the good fortune of coming to the first OIS back in 2009, which was the same year that we founded Regenix Bio. So I guess we're both celebrating a bit of an anniversary, but I'm pleased to come back in different form and actually present Regenix Bio as a public company today. So before I get into the details, uh, I will be making forward-looking statements. Normally, the lawyers have two slides worth of risk factors for me, but today we just have one. Um, so Regenix Bio, um, if there's one thing that I can ask you to remember about us today when I'm done with the talk, um, it's actually three things. It's pipeline, protein, and products. Regenix Bio is an AAV gene therapy company that has the broadest and deepest pipeline of any company in the space. Both through our internal development programs as well as partnered programs, we have over 20 programs in preclinical and clinical development four internal programs that are clinical stage at Regenix Bio, and 12 programs that are partnered that are clinical stage. Protein, the technology that underlies these programs, our NAV technology based on things like NAV AAV8 and AAV9, express the highest levels of protein of any AAVs that have been used preclinically and clinically. Protein, products. Last year, the first ever AAV product was approved in the US. I think this audience is pretty familiar with the Luxterna product. But that's the beginning, not the end. Uh, recently, our partner Novartis, which had a, uh, through an acquisition earlier this year of a company actually just up the road here in Chicago, announced the global submissions of BLA in the US equivalent in Europe and Japan for a new gene therapy product that's likely to get approved in the middle of 2019 for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy type 1, underwritten by the use of our AAV9 vector. So pipeline, protein, and products, that's the definition in, in simple form of what Regenix Bio is about. I'm gonna give you a little bit more background about how we're applying those. So simply, what is Regenix NAV technology? I mentioned already and sort of referred to the AAVs themselves, the serotypes seven, eight, and nine, but what's important to remember what's special about them? I mean, it's really elegant in its simplicity. They express a lot of protein, they do so durably, they do so safely, and they're easily manufacturable. And so this wasn't something that was obvious to the field. It wasn't something that was frankly known to the field. These AAVs weren't even known to exist up until the mid 2000s. So previous generations of AAV is what we've been using up until very recently. In fact, the first NAV technology was, wasn't actually put into the clinic until 2010. Um, notably uh, uh, resulted in a New England Journal of Medicine paper on hemophilia B using AAV8 to deliver the factor nine gene that effectively cured six patients. About five years later, the AAV9 gene was also published in the New England Journal of Medicine demonstrating durable high levels of expression of a gene called SMN, SMN1, in young children with SMA type 1, and basically moved these kids from a clinical phenotype of dying before the age of two to now many of those kids are out years later actually thriving, doing push-ups on videos, seeing all sorts of phenotypic and, and clinical advancement over time. So this is here, and the underlying technology, higher gene expression is important, more protein, durability with a one-time injection of gene therapy, and lower immune responses, safety, of course, of paramount importance. This is the pipeline program that we have partnered. You see companies on here that are peers of ours in the uh, small and mid-cap space, companies like Audentis, Voyager, um, Ultragenics. Large cap companies, Biogen, Novartis, which I mentioned through the acquisition of Avexis, um, Bayer, working on the development of hemophilia product, all using Regenix technology at various stages of development, all working towards products. Internally in Rockville, we have 180 people that are dedicated toward taking five programs forward, four of which are clinical stage. And the one I'm going to talk about most today that's most relevant for this audience is our lead program for RGX314 for the treatment of wet age-related macular degeneration. Additional programs that we have internally are focused on metabolic diseases through delivering AAVs intravenously and neurodegenerative conditions where we're looking at one-time administrations into the cerebrospinal flu fluid to address neurodegenerative conditions. RGX314 is meant to be a single treatment of an anti-VEGF protein to treat wet AMD. I'm sure that this uh, audience is more than familiar with the disease burden associated with things like wet AMD and DME and RVO and the contributions that VEGF and other factors have to the development of those diseases. Uh, 
it's, I think, apparent. Uh, actually, a uh, meeting I was at in Europe a couple of weeks ago, uh, I saw some remarks from a leading retinal specialist who's probably out here in the, in the audience that talked about the most compelling data that they've seen uh, first time in the history of uh, their training as an ophthalmologist was the 12-month data from Lucentis in clinical trials. And that the application of anti-VEGF, VEGF inhibition has for years changed the paradigm of treatment of wet AMD. But what's also become known as the products have emerged and been on the market for almost a decade now, maybe more, is that over time, the application and the paradigm of this treatment is eroding. And that patients beyond 12 months, beyond 24 months, aren't seeing the benefit that they necessarily could with sustained inhibition of VEGF. And there's also additional evidence that there's a strong correlation between people who do stay on sustained or frequent anti-VEGF and vision gain or vision maintenance. I'm bringing this data up not because it's a surprise to any of you, but because it's the basis of the target product profile and the design behind RGX314. To deliver a product, an anti-VEGF protein with a one-time administration so that sustained pharmacology of VEGF inhibition can be achieved. The application of Regenix, what's important about this for us is we've heard from a lot of experts, we've heard from all of you that inhibition of VEGF requires a lot of protein. So we went to the NAV technology, we went as deep as we could to design a program that could basically deliver as much protein as possible, our AV8 vector, and we went to a molecule that we thought had the affinity and the dissociation constants that were similar enough to standard of care to make the kind of change that we thought needed here. We, we challenged ourselves, we tested this preclinically, how much protein could we get? We compared it to other things that had been done, we compared it to standard of care. And what I'm happy to talk about now is that protein, those results from our clinical study, were actually gonna be updated tomorrow by our primary investigator, uh, Jeff Heyer at the uh, Retinal Subspecialty Day program as part of AAO. I'm gonna get a little bit of a, a highlight right here right now for you. Um, we designed a clinical trial to dose patients one time with RGX314 and evaluate safety and tolerability, but also measure expression of protein and look at their changes in retinal thickness and visual acuity and the need for additional anti-VEG injections as part of standard of care over six months. We've enrolled 24 patients in this study, now at four different doses. We've reported data on three of those doses. Jeff's gonna go into more details tomorrow about the background of the trial design. We've used a one-time subretinal procedure to deliver RGX314 at 200 microliter volume to the back of the eye. Happy to report at a top level that RGX314 has been well tolerated, no drug-related AEs or SAEs. This is the protein slide. We've seen dose-dependent protein expressed across the first three doses, one month after injection. You can see from this, the, co the third cohort is actually approximately two logs higher in protein expression from the first cohort, the lowest dose in the trial. And importantly, in summary, when we correlate the aqueous expression, we're actually measuring protein in the very front of the eye, even though the delivery mechanism is to put the drug in the back of the eye, close to where the mechanism of action and the, the site of the disease is actually occurring. We're measuring protein in the front of the eye, and we're seeing positive correlation to maintenance of retinal thickness, maintenance of visual acuity, and reduction in injection burden in patients that actually have been on VEGF therapy for many years. Most of the patients in our trial design have been received on order of 35 injections of standard of care sub, uh, intravitreal VEGF inhibition uh, since they were diagnosed. And so what we've been worked on, working on in terms of this trial design was to convert those patients with RGX314 into sustained levels of retinal thickness and visual acuity through a one-time injection. We had three patients in the third cohort who haven't received any injections for six months from the one-time injection of RGX314 and saw mean gains in BCVA of eight letters um, and saw retinal thickness reduced by 21 microns. Quickly running out of time, but I'll summarize for our company that uh, we're very focused on developing products with highly expressive protein technology and a pipeline that's broader and deeper than anyone has in AAV gene therapy and frankly gene therapy overall. Um, the background of the company has been to focus on enabling NAV technology for patients first. We do that through internal program pipeline. We do that through partnering with companies who are willing to take gene therapy, the risk of it, and, and put patients first. Um, we're going to finish 2018 with uh, over $400 million, having recently accomplished a uh, $200 million follow-on offering in August of this year. Uh, we started the year with... Uh, by, 
since the uh, acquisition of Avexis by Novartis with accumulating $180 million uh, to our balance sheet from that acquisition. Um, we're looking forward to a lot more updates both here at AAO between now and the end of the year, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.